And if the Shostakovich is a new piece to you, I thought it would be useful just to orient you a little bit, lay the groundwork for it. It's a great piece, but it is a very dark piece. He wrote it in 1960, and he had come to Dresden, Germany, to write the film music for a documentary being made about the Allied fire bombings of 1945. And when he arrived, he walked the streets, and he was simply overwhelmed by the uh, devastation that he saw around him. Even 15 years after the fact, much of the city was still a burnt out husk. And he descended into a kind of a reverie which lasted for three days and three nights of constant writing. And when he emerged from his reverie, he had this piece. And he dedicated it to the victims of war and fascism. But as with all Shostakovich, all mature Shostakovich, there are levels of meaning, some of them obvious, some of them perhaps less so. One of the subtextual elements in this piece that is very important to know about is that it is really autobiographical in many senses. Uh, and we know this not only because of what he told his friends about the piece, but also because he encoded his own handmade musical signature into the fabric of each of the five movements. It goes, re, mi, do, si, those four notes. If you translate them into German musical nomenclature, they are D for Dimitri and SCH, the first three letters of the German spelling of Shostakovich. And just to sensitize you to that figure so that you'll hear it as it goes by, I'll play you a little bit of a few places where it appears. It appears at the very beginning of the piece in a kind of a somber, fugal setting. <laughs> as his presence as a central protagonist of the piece. And we hear it sometimes fast, for instance, in the third movement, which is a valse macabre. We hear Shostakovich dancing above the throng in the first violin. <laughs> and the other element that's important to know in this piece is that it is a densely interwoven mesh of allusions to earlier pieces that he wrote in his life, uh, pieces that were significant to him for one way or another, and also pieces that I think related to his central theme of uh, being a memorial to victims of war and fascism. The first one we hear is in the first movement, and it is a quote from the beginning of his first symphony, which he wrote at 18, and at the age of 19, he had a great success. It catapulted him to overnight celebrity. It begins in its original form like this. But when you hear it in the context of the first movement, he plays it slow motion as if seen through some sort of lugubrious haze. remembering that he wrote this um, at the same time that he was writing a piece of film music, it does have the sense of being a cinematic flashback, a kind of uh, rosebud moment, citizen Dimitri looking back on his unsullied youth, perhaps. And I'll just give you one other example. The second movement is a harsh movement. It's very thuggish, um, perhaps jackbooted in the mood of uh, fascism. And uh, at the climax of it, there is another quote, this one from his piano trio of 1944, written at the height of the war, which has a very Jewish, klezmerish quality in its opening. And when we 
hear it at the climax of the second movement. It's screeching maniacally in the upper two violins. <laughs> Again, in a piece dedicated to the victims of war and fascism and composed in Dresden, Germany, it has an undeniable extra musical resonance to it. So that's enough said about the piece. It's a great piece of music. We have a great string quartet for you this afternoon, so I will stop talking and I'll go out and listen with you. Enjoy the afternoon.